everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jean. If you do like this video, I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to be notified when I upload new content, please hit that subscribe button and tap that bell down below. I would love it if you would be so kind to subscribe because I'm trying to build a base here um, to share my love of bags and lower and cheaper luxury uh, with others uh, as well. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the Saint Laurent Rive Gouche Tope, the large and the small. I have both. I am going to talk about why I have both. I am going to talk about why I took the large out with me yesterday when I went shopping instead of the small. I'm going to talk about the durability of the canvas and the liquid and stain resistance of it. I'm going to talk about the dimensions of each bag. I'm going to go over the exterior differences of each bag. I'm going to talk about what fits inside. I'm going to talk about organizers and base shapers. And I'm going to talk about whether I am going to keep both of them or not. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I'm going to share some lessons that I have learned through my bag journey and particularly a big lesson I learned yesterday. So why do I have both of the Rive Gouche tote bags? If you saw my other video, I was in Paris a few weeks ago. I went into the Saint Laurent store. Um, I was looking for this one, the larger one with the beige tannish border. They did not have this exact one. They had the larger one in black and green. And then they had the smaller one. It has the black border. I opted at the time to get the smaller one uh, because I thought it was just going to be more practical to use as an everyday bag. Um, it certainly will be better as an underseat carry-on bag than the larger one, absolutely. But I'm not necessarily sure this is the best carry-on bag. So I bought this at the store in Paris, and then when I got home, I couldn't stop thinking about the larger one. I've wanted this for over a year, and I'm going to talk about how this taught me a lesson in the last part of the video where I talk about lessons I learned. But I ended up just looking every day for the large one. It retails for $12.50 plus tax in the U.S. from places like Saks Fifth Avenue or directly from the YSL site. And then I saw it listed on End Clothing. Um, it's a British retailer, and I've never heard of them. So I Googled, are they legitimate? And I found all of these different articles and posts about how they're a huge brand, retail brand, um, in the UK, it was listed, if I didn't say it, at $1,060, and that included taxes. So at the end of the day, I ended up paying over $200 less for this than I would have if I had ordered it from YSL or Saks Fifth Avenue. So that made me happy. So yesterday, I went shopping uh, with a couple friends. Uh, we went downtown San Francisco. We were down there about six hours, had lunch, went shopping. I wanted to look, of course, at handbags. My girlfriend wanted to look at furniture, and my guy friend wanted to look at clothes. So we were trying to divide up things equally and just be together. It had been a while since I've seen one of them, a long while. Uh, so we had a nice lunch, went shopping. I went to Neiman Marcus in the Real Real, and that's the lesson part at the end. Um, but when I was gearing up to leave, I just couldn't decide what bag to take. Would this be okay to carry something by the handles for, I thought, four hours? It ended up being six hours. Would this one be easier or should I just use a shoulder bag? And I was texting with my girlfriend. I'm like, oh, I don't know what bag to bring. She said, you've got to bring the Reed Goosh. You love it. These things are made to be used and enjoyed. So I opted for the larger one. And I'm glad I did because you never know what the weather is going to be like in this city. There are so many microclimates. I live in one of the warmest parts of the city. West of here is one of the coldest parts of the city. Downtown, you kind of never know. 
So I wanted to bring a sweatshirt. It came off quickly and it's in here and this is all packed up. So I'm gonna unload everything in here, then talk about both of them while they're empty. And then I'm gonna load everything into the small one so you can see just how much more fits in here. But first I wanna talk about the durability and the stain and water resistance of the canvas. I don't baby my bags, I use them, but I'm always very cognizant of not where I put them on the ground. Like at lunch, they had just washed off the patio, it was wet. I pull the chair up to set this on a chair. I'm cognizant of how I store them. I don't store bags piled on top of each other. Um, this one and the smaller one, I will empty and store flat in the dust bag. But I don't baby them. But I try to be as aware of my surroundings as possible, but we can't always be 100% aware of what's going on. And yesterday I had what I thought was a bag ruining incident. I was walking around after several hours and I looked down and I think it was on this side. On this side here, hi honey, that's my cat. Every time she sleeps and then the second I set up to film, she has to come out and bug me but I love her, but let's get back to the video. So I looked down and to my horror, there was a big black smudge running like right along here. And what it looked like was grease. It looked like I had been working under a car, had my hands full of grease, and I just did, it didn't brush up against it. It looked like I smacked it on there and scrubbed it in. I was really thinking, oh my gosh, I just ruined this bag. I'm OCD. I won't be able to use it. Um, I came home. I wet a washcloth with just cold water and it wiped right off. So you can see there are no remnants of that nasty black grease that was all over this side. I did think at the best case scenario, I would maybe get it off enough where it wouldn't be as notable, noticeable because this isn't just a solid color like it looks from the back. If I zoom in, perhaps you can see it. There are different, like right, <laughs> right here and all over the canvas. It's like different. And so I thought perhaps I would get it off just enough where it would still look okay, but it came off. So as I said in the video for the smaller one, I did a water test where I just dropped water on the back and it just danced around and went right off. But it's nice to know that the coated canvas uh, held up and I just wiped it off and it still looks like new. Uh, so that being said, you know, I don't think it's stain proof or liquid proof. I think it's resistant to both. So I will still be extremely careful. Uh, now I want to talk about the dimensions of each of them. The large one's length is 18 inches. Its height is 14.1 inches. Its depth is 6.75 inches. And the handle drop is 6 inches. On the small, the length is 14.9 inches. The height is 15 inches. The depth is a little bit more. It's 6.9 inches and the drop is five inches. So if you're gonna carry it in the crook of your arm, both work, but this one is just a little roomier and a little more comfortable. It's got a wider and longer handle. Um, and that's predominantly why I decided to take it because I thought if I got tired and carried it by the crook of the arm, this would be uh, roomier. So the exterior differences, um, aside from the dimensions and the different color, this is uh, this tan or beige color all the way around, where this is the black color all the way around. The black shows lint much more than the tan, Although I've been fortunate where I haven't really noticed lint in here and on the front, uh, but perhaps, yeah, you can see it there. Look at all that lint. So if you bought the black one as a whole, it's going to be a lint magnet. The handles 
on the smaller one are softer than they are on the larger one. And that's probably because of the sturdiness and durability they wanted in this one uh, because it's bigger. So it's probably going to be heavier. So I can appreciate that. But the handles on uh, the small one are really soft. So from an exterior standpoint, um, they're similar except for the size. This obviously has much bigger lettering than this. Uh, that's to be expected because of the size difference in the length. I don't know if you can see that because I can't see my handle or my camera. So the bigger ones, oh yeah, I'm doing it right. The bigger ones longer and the smaller one is taller. Whoops. The smaller one is taller. The bigger one's open because I have it stuffed with what I took yesterday. So I'm going to take everything out and I'm going to transfer it um, to the smaller one. So right away, I was really glad I brought the bigger one because I wore a sweatshirt. It was like 57 degrees when I left and different weather sources were saying the temperature was gonna be anywhere between 60 and 68 and you never know in San Francisco, well, where is that temperature pinpointed? Because I'm, I'm not joking. Look at the Mr. Chili app, Mr. Chili. And you can see how the difference in temperature in this city from one end to the other can be as much as 30 degrees. No joke. So you always have to be prepared when you go out here because you don't want to be stuck boiling somewhere and you don't want to be stuck freezing. So I brought this sweatshirt and I took it off almost immediately and had it in here the whole day. Um, so it was really... Uh, Nice, obviously I had it folded in there better, but it went right up to the top. Then on the inside, I really had everything in this organizer here, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. I did use the slip pocket uh, for my phone and I had everything else in the organizer. For both of them, I think it's U Crafty with a U. Crafty, I ordered these plastic, um, cutouts because both of them when you have them full, full this bottom will sag and I just don't like saggy bags so I ordered these uh, plastic inserts and they just go in the bottom and it definitely keeps the shape uh, as you can see inside both of them it's just a large open pocket with that zip pocket so if you want to be more organized you're gonna have to get an organizer now my current organizer is a bit janky uh, because you can see maybe I cut off like an inch or two of the top of it. And the reason why I did it is because it is a full length organizer. It, it fits in here like a glove. So, and it went up to about here. And what that meant was there were like, I guess, reversed indentations. It was like doing like this. It was indent. Well, I guess it's not indenting, but there it was poking the bag. I mean, you can't really tell by how I'm doing it, but maybe like that. And I was worried it was going to get creased and misshapen. So I just took a pair of scissors and I cut off top of it. I have another organizer I'm going to try uh, that's coming soon. Um, it's shorter in the height and shorter in the length because I do like to not make it bulge out as much as possible. So my organizer really is going to fit between my two fingers, which will hopefully allow it to keep its structure. Um, but inside the organizer, I like this one because it has a lot of pockets. I have sunglasses and reading glasses, my tech pouch, I had some masks in there, my wallet, my keys, and some lip balms, and my, you can see it there, my AirPods. So this organize, and then I have a microfiber cloth in there that I'm leaving in there because I have to have one everywhere I go because I'm anal about my phone screen. But there's lots of pockets in this organizer, so everything had its place, which was really nice. 
Now I'm gonna transfer almost all of that and I'll tell you why into the smaller one. But with the smaller one, I did find this organizer on Amazon and it works quite well. It's pretty low um, here and um, I like that because I don't want to have it cause the bag to poke out and misshape it. Uh, but with this organizer, it's smaller, obviously, so my tech pouch can still go in there. My glasses can still go in there. My wallet, I will put right in there, but you can see it's already thick enough. So this stuff then has to go into my tech pouch, which means it's just a little uh, bit of an extra step to get into my keys, my lip balm, etc. But it's fine. So I'm going to put this organizer in here. And again, I have the same bottom shaper in here. I'm going to put this organizer in here. And then I'm going to put my sweatshirt in there. Um, and you'll see, does this fit? I'm not sure. It might because it has extra height. So yes, Basically, everyone, everything would still fit in there. Um, you know, there was additional room down in here in the organizer that I could have put more stuff in, whereas there's not in this one. But it still holds the sweatshirt just fine. Uh, so everything's in there. So they're both sizable bags. Um, they both have their advantages and disadvantages, I think. Uh, one of the advantages of the smaller one is when I did use it as my carry-on, and so it was heavy, all three buttons stayed closed. When I took this to the office earlier this week, now I had everything in here except the sweatshirt, but then I added in my work laptop and my iPad Pro, the 10-inch, 10.9-inch, 10-inch. And because of the weight of those things, this top button would not stay button. It kept popping out. And so that's just something to be aware of. If you really put heavy stuff in here, this top button isn't going to hold where this one held. And I think it's it's because of the added height. Um, when I had the heavier stuff, it was just too much pressure and it popped the middle button out. That being said, I don't think I'm ever going to close the middle button. I like the way that it looks from the top without the button closed uh, versus having the button closed. And I'm not concerned about somebody getting in there. I mean, if I don't know you're right on top of me um, sticking your hand in my bag, then I am completely oblivious. Um, so they both work out. Now, one of the advantages to this one is because of the length, you can have more stuff down here versus this one where if you carry a lot of stuff, more stuff than I do, you might have layers of things. Like if I put a water bottle in here with the sweatshirt, it's going to probably have to be on top of or under the sweatshirt versus here you could stick a water bottle on the side so you could just move the sweatshirt out of the way without taking it out and grabbing the water bottle. So depending on how much stuff you carry and this one it's going to be like layers vertically, whereas this one, more stuff is going to fit horizontally. Um, so you will probably be able to get more stuff in and out of this one more easily than this one, depending on what you carry. Um, now, that all being said, I don't know what to do. This is my favorite bag right now. There is no way on earth I am ever parting with this one. This one's kind of special because I bought it in Paris. And if I wanted to use it as a carry-on, it will fit under the seat in front of me. This one will not unless you put it this way and kind of bend the handles. And there's no way I'm doing that. And it's not going to fit in the overhead bin either because the handles are going to be too high. So... This will never go on the plane with me. Where is this might? But is this the best carry-on? I mean, from a, 
I love it standpoint. It's beautiful, yes, from a functionality standpoint. I'm not so sure. So, sorry, I keep looking down, but I keep, they don't stand up without anything in them. So this keeps flopping and falling on the ground. Um, so I'm definitely keeping this one. Um, this one, I'm not going to rush to sell. I am going to use it a few more times to see if there are situations where I would choose this one over this one. Obviously, if we were going to dinner with friends, this is much bigger. I would choose this one, but there's other bags I can use too. So I'm going to take my time. I'm not going to rush to sell it. Um, I will always think of my trip when I use this one, so that might be reason enough to keep it. So now I've done the comparison video. I want to talk about a little bit about some lessons that I learned. Um, I've just, if you've watched other videos, this handbag habit is a new thing for me. Buying more expensive handbags is an even newer thing than me, and I've really learned by all the mistakes I made in the last year and a half what I like and what I don't like. Something I'm still working on is not buying something just because I think it's nice and well-made and beautiful. And yesterday uh, when we went shopping, I really wanted to go to Neiman Marcus. They have almost all the luxury brands in the store, and I've never really seen these things in person. I've been oblivious to what handbags or bags people were carrying in the past. Yesterday it was interesting because I was noticing like almost everyone around me, what they were carrying. I was recognizing brands, um, which was really just different to think all these years I never paid attention to that stuff. So I've never really seen like Chanel and Givenchy and um, Chloe and Celine. I mean, they were all there. Tom Ford, YSL, um, MCM was in there, um, Alexander McQueen, Stella McCartney, um, there were just, they had everything except Fendi wasn't in there, um, they had Burberry, Fendi and Gucci weren't in there, but most of these brands have shops of their own right around Neiman Marcus, but I wanted to go in there and just look at these different bags and I almost fell over when I saw the Givenchy and Tagona bags because that is the holy grail for me, the medium and Tagona. That's the bag I want most. I think it's so beautiful and they had them um, not in the colors I wanted and they're still really pricey. Um, the small I think is $22.50 and the medium is $24.50. I want the medium, um, but I just can't drop $24.50 plus tax on a bag anytime I want. I watch so many YouTube videos on luxury handbags and it's amazing to me when I see somebody every week they've got some luxury unboxing and every month they've got some $10,000 plus haul. Like, I can't do that. I can't really even buy a $1,000 bag every month. I mean, yes, I could, but that's going to mean I'm not saving as much. That's going to possibly mean I'm dipping into my savings and I'm not willing to dip into my savings or go in debt to support this habit. So that means it's got to come out of my bonus and part of my bonus because I have to save part of my bonus or it's got to come out of my discretionary spending, which means I give myself a certain amount of money every pay period to spend on entertainment, dining out, this or that. So that means I have to go out to dinner less or order in less. I've got to have a chunk of that left over that I can toss aside and say, okay, now I've saved $3,000. If I want this, I can get it. So for me, it's different. Um, I don't know, obviously, the financial situation of all these luxury um, YouTubers, um, but I mean, God, I'm not going to go into multi-thousand dollars of debt to support this. But I may maybe I got a little sidetracked or long-winded there. Uh, but I had seen the Chloe Woody tote all over social media this summer. I've heard people refer to it as the it bag. Um, 
I saw the ones with the white, uh, whitish color with a different colored leather trim, and I thought, eh, not too crazy about them. But at Neiman's, they had one in a gray cashmere. that so that means I have to go out to dinner less or order in less I've got to have a chunk of that left over that I can toss aside and say okay now I've saved three thousand dollars if I want this I can get it so for me it's different um, I don't know obviously the financial situation of all these luxury um, youtubers um, but I mean, God, I'm not going to go into multi-thousand dollars of debt to support this. But I may, maybe I got a little sidetracked or long-winded there. Uh, but I had seen the Chloe Woody tote all over social media this summer. I've heard people refer to it as the it bag. Um, I saw the ones with the white, uh, whitish color with a different colored leather trim. And I thought, eh. Not too crazy about them, but at Neiman's, they had one in a gray cashmere. It was all gray with the white cloistral. I'll put a picture in here of it, and it was really beautiful. It really, 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 really beautiful. Um, and it retailed for eleven fifty. and I thought, you know, I'm going to think about it. I wanted to go to the Real Real. The store was right around the corner to see if... I've never done pre-loved, so I thought maybe there'll be something in there pre-loved that I like, maybe a nice Antigona. There wasn't, and then we went to other stores, and I thought, oh, I'm going to go back and get it. I'm just going to get it, and we got back to Neiman Marcus. It had sold like an hour earlier. Someone bought it, um, and at first I was a little bit disappointed, and then I thought, oh, that's weird. Like I thought if I would have bought this, they would have gotten a new one, from the back and not give, given me or sold me one that how who knows how many people had their grubby little hands on. Um, but then when I got home, I started thinking about it and would I ever choose the Woody Tote over this bag? No, never. I would never choose the Woody Tote over this bag. No way. So it really helped me learn a lesson there. You don't have to get something today just because you have the money today. I budgeted myself about $1,200 to spend. I didn't spend a thing yesterday, so that was nice. But I think of this bag and how I wanted it for over a year and how I've watched video after video after video on YouTube of this bag and have drooled over it for a year. Sorry, she's back there like scratching the box at the the computers on. So that's what this has to be going forward. If I love something enough where I can't get it out of my mind, then I will buy it. And if the Chloe tote uh, constantly is in my mind, maybe in six months I'll have it. I don't know. Um, but I think my next purchase is going to be this Belmont bag. Um, I'm going to try to remember to post a picture here, and I would love your all's thoughts on that, yay or nay. I've gotten both from different friends I've asked, um, and that size seems to fit within the bag size that I am really lacking right now in terms of like a medium size bag shoulder strap. You'll see the picture. Um, comment below. Let me know what you think about that bag and if I should get it or not. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care, everyone.